Today I'm gonna to show you how to create these Olympics inspired title templates in Apple Motion and publish them to Final Cut Pro. Now these graphics are inspired by a commercial I saw while I was sitting on the couch watching the Olympics. I think it was a promo for NBC's coverage of the Olympics and I really like the style and I thought I could help recreate it for you guys. Now, if you're not an Apple Motion user, don't worry, you can still get access to these title templates. If you join my Patreon community, all of my patrons get access to all of my motion projects that I've ever created for this channel. But if you actually want to learn Apple Motion and I totally recommend you do if you are a Final Cut user, check out my course, Motion Launchpad. It'll get you started in Apple Motion and tutorial and all the tutorials you see here on YouTube will make a lot more sense once you take that course. All right, guys, let's just dive right into it. Here are my project settings. My duration is five seconds long and we are going to create a Final Cut title. Let's hit open. So here is the default setup when you create a title. I've got this text box here. And the first thing I'm going to do is modify this text. So I'm using the font Helvetica New and I do think this title template is most successful when you use all capital letters. I'm gonna crank up the size of this text to 400. I'm going to change the vertical alignment to the bottom using this button here. Let's crank down the line spacing to negative 177. I want my two lines of text super close together. And then let's head on over to the properties tab in the inspector and just zero out the position. All right, now I'm going to clone this text. If you're not familiar with clone layers, a clone layer is a copy of an element in your motion project. And whatever changes you make to that original element will be reflected in the clone layers. So I'm just going to hit the K key to clone that text. And I'm going to take that text in my project pane and I'm going to drag it up above my group to create a new group. And I'm going to rename this group top text. And then I'm going to head down to my original text here and we're just gonna disable that. Now what I want is to make sure that the bottom edge of my second line of text is resting right at the horizontal center of my canvas. So I'm going to create a ruler line. If you're not seeing the rulers, head on up to the view menu and make sure you have show overlays enabled and rulers enabled. And I'm just gonna grab at the top of my screen and move my ruler line right to the zero point. And then I'm going to take my clone layer of text and in the properties tab in the inspector window, I'm just gonna nudge this down so that my text is resting right on that yellow line, like so. Now I'm going to add a move behavior to this clone layer. So selected on that clone layer, let's head up to behaviors, basic motion and move. And I wanna start my move 20 frames into my project. So I'm gonna move my playhead to the 20 frame mark, select that move purple bar and hit the I key to start it in. And then I wanna make this move a duration of 12 frames. So I'm going to hold down shift and arrow over once to jump 10 frames and arrow over twice more singles to get to 12. And I'm gonna hit the O key to mark my out point. Now I'm gonna cue my playhead to the end of the move. And in the inspector window, I'm going to modify the Y position. So the top edge of my text is hitting that yellow line, nice and tight. And I wanna change my speed from constant to accelerate. Let's play that back. All right, now let's add a color solid to our top text group here. So I'm gonna head on over to library, generators, grab that color solid, and I'm going to drag it into my top text group. By default, it's gonna be blue, but I wanna make it white. So in the inspector, let's change this guy to white. And I wanna crop the bottom half of this color solid so the bottom edge is now resting again on this yellow line. So I'm gonna head on over to properties. Let's enable our crop and show it. And I wanna crop the bottom a value of 1080. And I know it's 1080 because this is a 4K project. And now I wanna add an image mask to this color solid. So I'm going to right click on it in my project pane, select add image mask. In the image mask well in my inspector, I'm gonna drag that clone layer. And now when our text moves below the ruler line, it disappears. Now we're going to take that top text group and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm just gonna right click and hit duplicate. And I'm going to rename this bottom text so we don't get confused. Let's select the color solid in our bottom text group, head on over to properties. And I'm going to change the crop on this instead of cropping the bottom by 1080, we're now gonna crop the top by 1080. Now let's select the image mask in our bottom text group. So I'm gonna select it in the project pane, head on over to the image mask tab in the inspector, and I'm going to grab the clone from our bottom text 
group and drop that in the source well. And now I'm going to invert the mask. So now when I run my playhead, you can see the effect. Now just to drive home the way the clone layer works, let's go back in our project pane and I'm going to select that original text. Now this text is disabled. You cannot see it in our project, but watch what happens if I just enter in more characters here. It's reflected on both of my clone layers. Do you guys see that? Let me undo that. So this is kind of the meat of our title template, but we do need to resolve how it's going to come in and come out. So what I'm going to do is queue up my playhead to the beginning of the timeline. And I want to use some shape masks to make the elements wipe on from the center of the frame. Let's start with the top text group. So I'm selected on the entire group in my project pane, and I'm going to grab the rectangle mask tool, and I'm going to draw a rectangular mask at the bottom half of my frame. And I'm gonna zoom in real tight in my canvas and make sure that that image mask is right along my ruler line. We wanna be super precise here. And now I wanna keyframe the move of this rectangle mask. So I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the beginning of my timeline, add a keyframe on the position line, and I'm going to jump 12 frames in my timeline, and I'm going to reposition this rectangle mask. So now that the bottom edge is right on that ruler line, I'm going to disable my bottom text group so I can get a better look as I work. So now if I play that back, my text wipes on, do you see that? And then at the end, we want it to do the reverse. So what I'm going to do is cue up my playhead to the end of the timeline. I'm going to jump back in time, 12 frames, select it on that rectangle mask under the properties, I'm going to add a keyframe. I'm not gonna change any of the values. I'm just gonna add a keyframe. And then I'm going to jump to the end of my timeline. And on the Y position, I'm gonna reposition the top edge of the rectangle mask back with my ruler line. Now we need to do the same thing for our bottom text, but we need to do the inverse. So I'm just going to copy that rectangle mask by right-clicking it in my project pane, selecting copy, and I'm going to paste it to my bottom text group. And let me enable that group. And now what we need to do is just reverse the direction of the rectangle mask move. So instead of going from the bottom of the frame to the top, it needs to go from the top of the frame to the bottom. So I'm just going to do that by swapping around these red keyframes, making sure I'm working on the rectangle mask that I've just copied to the bottom text group. If you're not seeing these little red keyframes, you need to enable this button here at the top of your timeline that reveals those red keyframes. And what this allows you to do is move them around without changing the values of them. So I'm just going to move the first one down past the second one, take the second one and move it to the very first frame of my project. And then I'm gonna cue up my playhead to that 12 frame mark and reposition this keyframe. So that's the build in that we're getting here. Now let's draw attention to the last two keyframes on that same rectangle mask. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna swap the position of each of those keyframes. And so now this is how my animation ends. So now it's time to think about how this title template is actually gonna function when we bring it into Final Cut Pro. Right off the bat, I know that sometimes I like my titles to animate in and out, and sometimes I don't want them to animate in or out. So I wanna give myself that flexibility right now here in motion. So I'm going to add what are called build in, build out markers. So I'm gonna cue my playhead to after the second keyframe of my rectangle masks. And I'm going to right click at the top of my playhead and add a marker. Then I'm gonna right click that green marker and hit edit marker. And what you wanna do is change the type from standard to build in optional and hit okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing at the end of our timeline. I'm gonna right click at my playhead, select add marker, right click on it again, edit marker. And this one is going to be build out optional. Okay, so that's gonna give me those check marks in my inspector window when I publish this to Final Cut if I want this title template to build in or out. Now I wanna use the link behavior a couple times to make sure this title template really works in Final Cut. So the first thing I wanna do is select it on the clone layer in our bottom text copy. On the position line, I'm going to drop down, add a parameter behavior and select link. And then under the behaviors tab in this source well, I'm going to grab the clone layer from our top text 
and drag it into this well. And now the position of my top text and bottom text will always be linked no matter what changes I make in our title inspector in Final Cut Pro. I also want to link the color of our color solids. So in the bottom text group, I'm going to select my color solid under the generator tab in the inspector window under color. I'm going to drop down, add parameter behavior and select link. I'm going to take the color solid generator from my top text group, drag it into the well, and I'm going to leave that source parameter as it is. It should say object color solid color. Now we need to think about which parameters we want to be able to adjust in our title inspector in Final Cut Pro. So let's start first with our original text element. Even though this is disabled, this is the source of all of our text elements. So we want to publish some of these parameters. First and foremost, I want to be able to change the content of this text inside my title inspector, not just the text inspector. So I'm going to head down here, hover my cursor till I get this little carrot drop down, and we're going to publish this. Then let's go back up to the top of our title inspector under font. I want to be able to change the font in the title inspector. So let's publish that. I want to be able to change the size. So let's do that. And I also want to be able to change the alignment. So let's publish that. I also know that I'm going to want to be able to change the line spacing because if I resize my text, I want to be able to adjust the spacing conveniently in the title inspector. And then the other thing I want to publish is the Y offset, not both the X and the Y, just the Y. So I want to twirl down on offset on the Y line. I'm going to publish this. And at this point, I'm going to scroll up to the top of my project pane, select where it says project in the inspector window. I want to make sure I'm on the project tab. And here you can see all of my published parameters on this Y offset. I'm going to rename this start position. So I'm just going to double click on the text to highlight it and then I can rename it. All right, let's publish a few more things on the top text clone layer. This guy right here. I know it's disabled. We're going to look for this and we're going to look for the move behavior. I want to publish the Y position. So I'm going to twirl down on position, look for the Y value, and I'm going to publish this. And I also want to be able to change the speed of the move. So I'm going to publish this parameter too. Now let's head back to our published parameters. So at the top of the project pane, I'm going to hit project and on the project tab in my inspector, you can see the new additions we just made on Y position. I want to rename this end position. And one last thing we need to publish. Let's head back to our top text group and look for that color solid generator. And I want to publish this color so I can change the color of everything when I bring this into Final Cut Pro. Now we just need to send this to Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to head on up to file, save as. I'm going to save this in my favorites category, which I've already created. I'm going to call it text knockout horizontal and let's publish it. So here is our title template. Let's drop it onto this clip here in my title inspector. I can change the content. I'm going to center up this text. And so by default, both lines of text are going to fall below the horizontal line of my screen, but I can actually adjust this using the end position value that we published so that one line is above and one line is below. And then if I wanted to, I could keyframe this. So let me add a keyframe here at the end position, play it for just a half a second, and then bring both lines of text below the horizontal line. Now let me show you how in just a few steps we can convert this to this vertical configuration. Okay, so here is the horizontal title we just built together. Let's make it vertical. First, I'm going to head up to file, save as, and rename this text knockout vertical. Now what I'm going to do is collapse my bottom text group and my top text groups. I'm going to select both of these groups in my project pane by clicking on one, holding down the command key and clicking on the second. Then I'm going to right click and group these two groups together. So now I've got them in one big group. And then I'm going to rotate this group to negative 90. Then I'm going to reposition this group on the X value so that the white color solid is at the edge of the frame. Now I'm going to head to my original text element and under the text tab, let's bring down the size of this. Obviously the scale does not work with our new configuration and I'm going to decrease the line spacing and then I'm going to change the offset parameters to center in the frame. Now we did not rotate 
this original text. So we're actually gonna have to change the X value to bring it down in the frame. I think I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Okay, this looks good. Now in our project pane, let's twirl down on our top text. I'm gonna select that clone layer and I'm gonna twirl down to reveal the move. And on the clone layer, let's head on over to properties and I'm going to reposition this text so that the bottom edge of my second line of text is right on that color solid. And then let's select the move behavior in our project pane and bring our playhead down past the move in our timeline. And let's reposition this. Again, we've rotated this text. So I'm actually going to zero out the Y value and we are going to reposition this using the X value. Okay, now we need to think about our published parameters. So let's head on up to project in the project pane and on the project tab. Remember we created the start and end positions. I'm going to unpublish both of these because now that we flipped the frame, those are the wrong adjustments. So let's first start by grabbing that original text that is disabled. And on the offset line, we're going to publish the Y position. Now I'm gonna head back to my publish parameters and I'm going to rename this start position. Now let's head down to the move behavior in our top text group. And on the X value, we're gonna publish this. And back in our project settings, we're gonna rename this guy end position. And guys, one last change I know you're gonna wanna be able to make when you use this title template in Final Cut Pro is to be able to adjust the vertical position of this text. So let's go back to our original text and then let's publish the X offset. Now let's go back to our published parameters. I'm going to rename this vertical position. And now I'm gonna select the start and end that vertical position and drag them above my speed in my published parameters. So this all just makes a little more sense to me when we go back to Final Cut Pro. So I'm gonna hit Command S. And here in Final Cut Pro, there it is in our titles and generator sidebar, and we can make modifications to this, of course. So there are your knockout text title templates for Final Cut Pro. If you want access to any of my working files, make sure you join my Patreon community. If you wanna know more about Apple Motion, check out Motion Launchpad. I'll link to that below. You guys, thanks for hanging out. Here's some other videos I know you're gonna love, and I'll see you again. 